right, we are continuing on with our big idea for data. Collecting, displaying, and analyzing data helps us to solve problems and understand the real world. Concept today to demonstrate an understanding of how to construct and analyze a double bar graph, specifically drawing double bar graphs. We've done some interpreting, now we're into drawing. Lesson three of unit seven, and again, some are coming from, some of the information is coming from maximizing math. All right, let's take a look at an example here. We have a grade five class that's selling snacks at morning and afternoon recess. This table shows one day's sales. So remember, this is a table, it's a chart, it is not a graph. Um, it's a way to organize our information before we put it into a graph so we can more easily graph it. But uh, when you are asked to draw a graph, showing a table is not drawing a graph. So just be careful about that. Uh, we have David who's decided to use a double bar graph display this, to display this data. First he drew and labeled two axes, so he's got this side and he's got this side. He's made this side snacks and usually the first part should be uh, the bottom axis. And then he's got a uh, total number of sales and it's in dollars, so he's got that clearly written there. We need the dollar sign for that. We should have anything that we need for graphing if it's uh, meters we should have meters if it's kilometers we should have kilometers if it's degrees celsius we should have degrees celsius if it is if it's dollars we should have a dollar sign to indicate what kind of a measurement is being used there if we take a look um, he's chosen a scale of one square representing four dollars so that means he's counted by four so we always always have to start at zero and he's counted by fours and we have to make sure we count the lines. So four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. His highest amount was $30, so he went a little bit above that with $32. Um, numbering makes sense, it's clear, it's uh, in a regular interval. He's counted by twos the whole way. If you're counting by ones, by twos, by threes, by fives, it has to be by that same number the whole way up that axis. He's going to draw two bars for each snack in the table, and in each pair he colored the morning bar red and the afternoon bar green. See what he's done here? Here we go, we see our, our completed graph. He has drawn a legend, we need to have a legend to show what each color of the bar represents. So he's got morning is red, afternoon is green, and he needs a title, and it's snack sales. I probably would have added the date for the snack sales just to be specific. Um, it's very clearly drawn. If it is right in between, so between four and eight, so approximately six, it would be right in the middle for your bar. Uh, so when they're in the middle, you have to consider that. What can we say from looking at this graph? Well, we could say that the fruit sales are a little higher in the morning than in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. How much higher? It looks like about four dollars more. Cereal bars are much higher in the morning than in the afternoon. Oh wow, looks like four, six, eight, ten, plus two more, about twelve dollars more in cereal bars in the morning than in the afternoon. Popcorn sales twice as much in the afternoon as in the morning, quite a bit more. And pretzel sales were the same at both recesses um, at six dollars, so same amount. So again, doing some excellent concluding based on our graph that we've drawn. Very uh, important things to remember when drawing your graph. Um, your title should be very specific, if as much as possible. Your axis titles, so each side needs a title. You need to include the units, the dollars, the degrees Celsius, those kinds of things. When you're numbering, number the lines, not the spaces, very common mistake. Often makes drawing those graphs really difficult and makes reading those graphs really difficult. Um, if the line is specifically the five and the next line is the 10, when it's halfway in between, we can see what that's supposed to be. If it's the space that's five, then we don't have the line to make that halfway point, which isn't possible. So we have to number the lines. 
We also have to number in regular intervals. So we have to number by fives, by twos, by tens, and so on. It can't start at zero, then go to one, then go to three, six, and so on. When we think, oh, I'm counting by threes. Well, actually, I'm not counting by threes because zero to one is one, one to three is two, three to six is three, six to nine is three, but I haven't counted by threes the whole way through. If I'm counting by threes the whole way through, I cannot have one. It would have to go zero, three, six, nine to be counting by threes. So make sure you're counting by regular intervals. You must also always start at zero. Realize this is also called the scale. The interval or the numbering is called the scale. So when a question asks you about the scale, they are talking about the numbering. You cannot jump when numbering, so I cannot decide, like I said over here, that I'm going to count by ones and then jump to threes. I cannot also say my information I have uh, is one, two, and then it jumps all the way up to ten. I cannot do that. I have to continue to count by ones because that's what I started with. Um, note, however, the scale does not have to be the same for both the x and the y axes. So. The bottom can be counted by ones, and the side could be counted by fives. It does not have to be the same for both. It can be different. You must include a legend uh, telling what the different color is or the different pattern. So here you can see that the pattern is different on this legend to tell me which is the children, which is the adults. Sometimes it's the color, and it must, must, must be drawn on graph paper. If it's not drawn on graph paper without these vertical lines that we see here, a graph is very hard to read. So it must be drawn on graph paper. All right. To practice, we're going to just compare two graphs to begin with and uh, see what makes them easier to read. So we've got both of these graphs that are about the weekly television viewing habits of children and adults by the looks of things. We are missing a title down here, but this looks like it's Alberta, Saskatchewan, Newfoundland, Quebec. Um, same provinces here. Here we have the number of hours and the number of hours. Um, counting by tens here, counting by fives here. So looking at these graphs, which one would you find easier to read considering that our graph, our highest piece of data, is under 20? Turn and talk to your elbow partners. Which one is easier to read? Where can I see what this little box means more easily? All right, well, in my opinion, and, and um, truthfully, ooh, this one is definitely more easy to read. We can more clearly indicate what these half um, or not full bars are, whereas here, it's really hard to say, okay, well, that's probably about five. Well, it's a little bit more than five, I'm not sure. That's a little bit less than five, I'm not sure. That's too difficult. So when your numbering is only going up to 20 on this side, probably your better bet is to count by fives, not by tens. So you really have to consider what your highest number is and what a lot of your data is in order to be able to determine your scale. So if possible, counting by ones, twos, fives are better choices then counting by tens, fifties, and, and so on. Really look at the numbers that you're working with. All right, you're moving on to your concept practice, page 268, 269, numbers 1, 2, 4, and 5. Drawing double bar graphs. As you're drawing, make sure if you have any questions, please remember to ask.